Now I know. I know you're sitting at home, you're crying and you're feeling all bad for yourself and sorry for yourself because you can't be at your favorite world famous festival this year, which is why we join forces with the organizers to, you know, cheer you the fuck up a little bit. This is Comedy Central at the Edinburgh Fringe and I'm Jamali Maddox. That's right. Comedy Central and Edinburgh Fringe, they've teamed up, they've done the ultimate link up and they're gonna bring you the most incredible rising stars from the thousands that were due to perform this year. And you don't even have to queue in the rain, all right? You can watch from your sofa, just like these guys who watched all of our performances live. Look, look, at, look at that beautiful crowd. Well, I say beautiful, it's the best we could get at the short notice, but it's, it's, it's fine, it doesn't matter. Right now, we're about to have a comedian who I know personally. I started doing open mics with her. She's a good friend of mine and she's fucking hilarious and I'm so happy she's here. So please give it up for Tanya Moore. Oh, oh this is nice. Thanks for letting me come to your house, guys. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm a 37-year-old uh, Jamaican, British-born female. And most people are like, what does that mean, Tanya? Are you Jamaican or are you British? And I'm like, I'm both, guys. I love indoor skiing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but also, like, I'm, I'm, I'm British-born, but I'm Jamaican-raised. So that means, like, I can swim, but, like, a little bit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, like, I know my dad, but, like, a tiny bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm Jamaican, but I'm British, you know, I'm in the middle. So I like to do <laughs> lots of different things. And it's nice to be here. It's nice to be outside the house, because I tell you, quarantine was a lot. I started quarantine with my friend and her nine-year-old daughter, which was the best thing for me. And this was, like, the cool, coolest nine-year-old that you could find on the planet. Like, I found myself trying to get her to like me like I was laughing at all of her jokes. All of her jokes were shit. But I was rolling on the floor. She didn't care. I, I, I downloaded TikTok to get this girl to like me. I learned all the routines, walking around the house like this. <laughs> didn't give a shit. Now, why do I care that a nine-year-old doesn't like me? We'll unpack that later. But for right now, I was a mess, okay? Then there was one morning, she came into the living room, she looked at me and she sighed and she walked out. Now the adult in me, understood that she might be going through some things. The child in me wanted to punch her in the throat. I'll tell you the truth, guys, okay? So her mum could see that I was feeling a little bit upset. So she said, Tan, I'm going to go and speak to her. Just wait here. So now I'm in the living room. I'm pacing up and down, wondering how much prison time you get for nothing a nine-year-old, right? So her mum comes back in, and she lets me know she's starting her lady journey. Right, her monthly. She hasn't started the bleed, but she's on the way. She's getting the pains. And in that moment, I realized it wasn't about me. So I went to the bedroom and I wanted to give her a hug. But when I got to the door, I realized I just saw her on the bed. She was like in a pretzel shape. She was in so much pain and it took me back and I remembered. And then all of a sudden, I didn't see this cool nine-year-old. I saw her for what she was, a baby. So I thought, I'm going to leave her. And I backed out. And as I was walking away, I thought to myself, I hope I don't sink with that bitch. <laughs> because if you can't enjoy my TikToks, you can't enjoy my period. <laughs> I miss going out. I miss lots of different things. I like this gig. I miss going to gigs abroad. I went to this wonderful gig in Slovenia. Slovenia is a beautiful country, right? You come out the airport. It's quite picturesque. And the guy who was coming to meet the comic, he came over to me. He had panic on his face. He said, Tan, bring it in. Bring it in, babes. He said, babes, there's not many black people in Slovenia. <laughs> There's probably about four. <laughs> yeah. So when we go traveling around, people are gonna stare at you, especially those of the elder generation. I said, babes, <laughs> that's sorry, let's go. Um, <laughs> and I miss little moments like that. Do you know what I mean? I miss having those little mishaps. There's so many different places. I travel a lot as a comedian and, and we travel alone. I've come to this conclusion, guys, and just stick with me with this one. I've come to the conclusion that I'm selfish, but like in a positive way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So like, I don't mind helping, but I have to feel good at the end of it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like I run for charity, but I'll tell everyone on Facebook. You know, that kind of, you know, like on the tube on the way here, there was a lady with a pram and she needed help up the stairs. And I helped her because it was rush hour and everyone was like, oh my God, what a nice girl. <laughs> right? But if I'd seen her at 11 a.m. when no one was there, fuck that, innit? Because that's just, <laughs> just helping. I mean, I went to Wales to do a gig, right? I spent, 10, I spent 10 weeks in Wales doing a job, right? Now, it's 
mostly when you say Wales, people instantly think of Cardiff, right? I wasn't lucky to be in Cardiff. I was in this quaint little seaside town called Porth Call, right? And it's right on the edge, um, right on the edge of death, right? And I was there <laughs> for 10 weeks. And most people in this town are elderly, right? They're in that space where they're like waiting for that heaven's waiting room. And I was just there enjoying myself. And I, want, I thought, let me just go and have a look around the town. Right? And I found, apart from uh, cemeteries, this wonderful restaurant right, called Harbour Bar. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Harbour Bar is the best restaurant in Port Call. Do you know why? Only fucking restaurants <laughs> in Port Call, right? So I go into this restaurant and I see, I think the restaurant looks a little bit middle class. I think, do you know what? I'm going to pretend to be middle class, right? So I bought a Guardian and I sat down. <laughs> and um, the waitress comes over to me right? and she says, uh, would you like a star? Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't normally get a starter when I go out. You go Nando's, you get the chicken, you fuck off, right? <laughs> but I was like, no, Tanya, be in middle class, get a starter. I said, what would you recommend? She said, I recommend the potato and leek soup. Never had potato and leek soup in my life. I'm a Jamaican. <laughs> there's potato and leek in my soup, but there's more ingredients, right? There's more, there's more food than water in a Jamaican soup. But I thought, Tanya, be in middle class. See how it goes. I said, lady, bring me the potato and leek soup. She brings the soup. I eat the soup. One of the best soups I've had in my whole life, right? Now I'm sad because I'm by myself. So I'm looking around the restaurant, just trying to get eye contact with someone so I can say, babes, have you tasted the soup? <laughs> Listen, there was a table of people, right? Right here, yeah. 10 of them having a party. One of them starts choking, right? Someone else from the table jumps up, runs around and starts giving him the Heimlich. As he's receiving the Heimlich, he gave me eye contact. That was my one opportunity to say, babes, did you taste the fucking soup? <laughs> Listen, when he died, we all had soup. It was just amazing. I've been Tanya Moore, and you've been absolutely awesome. I'll see you next time. Bye.